Hey everybody, this is Alex with Blackwing. I'm here with John Goodwin and Johnny Irian, the uh, two songwriters responsible for Inside the Endless Poem, and we're going to chat about the song a little bit. So, hey guys, how's Hello. it going? Good. Sweet. Well. Um, why don't y'all tell me a little bit about the song? Well, um, right at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, I was down in my basement and I came up with this uh, guitar riff and I actually played it for Alan Kozlowski, who plays tambora and um, who studied with Robbie, as hopefully all of us know, or most of us know. And, and he loved the vibe. And, uh, and he mentioned it, it went well with everything that was going on um, as far as the uh, centennial. And uh, there were supposed to be several shows for uh, Robbie's 100th celebration. So um, I, uh, I immediately turned to uh, the incredible Mr. John Goodwin, who we have so graciously with us on this Zoom call. Uh, John and I have been writing lots of songs together, and I knew if John was into it that um, we might be able to, uh, to finish it fairly quickly. I was into it. I was very inspired. And that makes it easy for me. Yeah, definitely. So how was, um, I mean, how was this process different because of the quarantine or was it, I mean, you guys, you know, John, you're in Nashville, right? And, and Johnny, you're in, you're in the Berkshires. So you're already miles and miles apart. So I guess, I guess maybe it wasn't different, but how, if, if it all wasn't different? Well, the w funny thing is that like, you know, you ask two, two, different people to remember the same event and one person says it was a blue horse and the other one goes it was a green horse so according to my memory and i could be totally wrong um i think we started this before the quarantine and johnny and i have been writing together sometimes but long distance sometimes because i'm in tennessee and he's in massachusetts so uh um, he played me the music that he'd started, and I was just totally inspired. So, you know, as, as I usually do, I start, you know, lyrics start coming to me, and there's a lot of rewriting to do and stuff like that. But slowly over a two or three week period, we hammered it out together and ended up with the final lyric. The writing wasn't different than any long distance co-writes we've done in the past. Yeah. I think what what makes this really unique to me is just the speed that the whole thing came together with, right? It felt like the song, like you guys wrote the song and that happened really quick by, by all accounts. And then it recorded the song, which happened like lightning with this band from all over the country and then yeah. pressed the record all within these, two months of quarantine basically um it's just it's it's insane to me um okay so uh the, the message of the song overall preaches togetherness unity at least that's kind of the reading that i get from it um was that message inspired by the current events that are happening right now i try for the answer the answer to that johnny at least my answer i think the message of the song not only applies to current events but it applies to past events in our history too. I mean, the theme of you know us all being together and one people and one spirit, you know, has been a theme that's been present like you know for centuries. Uh, so it wasn't specifically inspired by current events, but it ended up applying to those events too. For sure, yeah, it's a very Ravi message. Right. I mean, so I, I guess that that leads nicely in, into that question. How where is Robbie's imprint on this song? You know, this is a song that, as you mentioned, um, came about partly because of the centennial, partly because of this project that we were doing with the Robbie Shankar Foundation. Um, how did he inspire the song and, and how did he inspire you guys? 
can I can I go for this, Johnny? <laughs> I'm a lyricist. I I'm the, I have a lot of words, you know. Absolutely. One thing, you know, Johnny told me that he'd been asked to write the song, you know, as part of the hundredth anniversary of Robbie's birth, and also the the release of the Black Wing um, pencil in honor of Robbie. So, um, you know, knowing that it was it was connected to those two, I, I thought that it should be extremely universal, very positive, very uplifting. And that was at least my inspiration of what got me into it is, hey, let's write something that, that Ravi would like, you know. I mean, I saw Ravi play at the Monterey Pop Festival back in 66, you know, and the audience was it was black and white and christian jewish every every kind of people were there and he went out there and he just won everybody's heart so the universality of his music and artistry you know definitely left an impression on me at that point what about you johnny well the whole song is really uh a culmination for for me of like a somewhat of a a circle. Um, in 1993, I bought a sitar <laughs> after my yeah. first got its publishing deal in North Carolina because I love, I didn't, you know, I had a couple Robbie records, but I definitely found out about Robbie the way most of the world found out was about Robbie was through the Beatles, you know. And, and I loved the sound so much on the early Beatle records that I went and bought a sitar in North Carolina. And believe me, in North Carolina in 1993, you had to like get a male thing to like, you know, it was basically a <laughs> ordering of sitar. And I would take the sitar and go down t to the creek <laughs> and play my sitar. You know, um, I mean, John said it. The bat. I mean, if you saw Rob, it, the universality of Robbie's, uh, I mean, I wish I could have seen that show. Um, but to to have spent a lot of time with Alan Kozlowski um, and and seen photos of Robbie and seen interviews that Alan has done, um, it's really full circle. For, for me in, a, in an amazing way that the universe goes on forever. You know, all we have is each other. Absolutely. I yeah. hope our coming close to where your questions were, were pointing. No, it, no, it is. I mean, I, I'm just curious about the process really, how it works. I know sometimes when there's two songwriters, there's, um, there seems to be like conflicting messages sometimes. And, and really, I don't, I don't feel that at all with this song. Um, yeah. it, it, it seems, it seems to practice what it preaches, right? It's, it's all together. I, oh, I believe so. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that the ideas are conflicting, but different people have different ideas about what it should say. And fortunately with me and Johnny and people I write with, we usually can realize what the best idea was, no matter who, wrote it so it was just a matter of finding priority as the lyric progressed. yeah absolutely i think you guys did a great job with it um it was interesting though i might want to add that when it stunned when john i can't remember actually how it happened but we were looking for a rhyme, uh, a rhyme and he said inside the endless ohm is that cool and i was like yeah, there's ohms on the pencil, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, funny thing is, like, as we were writing the song, we wrote, I think we wrote the verse, and we started writing the chorus, and we got to the end of the chorus, and we needed something that really just popped. Right. I mean, tied it all together, and at first I thought, I think Johnny probably remembers this, I, was say, I said, how about, like, there's no place like ohm? <laughs> was kind of dumb and I had the good sense to realize that and then I accidentally I just popped out inside the endless home and and there we were I mean we had the you know we had the hub of the wheel we just had to get the spokes right you know yeah and that's sure. that's normally 
what happens with us on the phone, whether it's the, the hook line or the inspiration for the song or it, but that aha moment is when things really start to happen and we both get inspired and then we're just like constantly chipping away at it. And, and I'm constantly you know, working on the mel the melody to fit with everything. And so it, it's been to write with John it's been it's been an amazing journey thank you John same here I mean it's uh, been a joy even though we never see rarely see each other you know we <laughs> seem to be able to write songs that we love and you know hopefully other people will feel the same way about some of them you know yeah I had always had the I would always wanted to move to Nashville you know and do the Nashville thing and write with you know and be in Nashville because love love all the early country music that came out of Nashville. And uh, I met John through, through Jeff Bridges and who Jeff introduced us. And, and I, I get to go to Nashville and write with one of the, one of, I think the best songwriter in Nashville. Well, thank you, Matt. I, 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 I'm not sure I can completely own that, but I'll own a piece of it. I mean, there are some amazing songwriters in Nashville and lucky to have that compliment you know added to my uh, you know well thanks guys um i think the track is awesome uh i really into it and i think it really embodies the message um that this pencil and more importantly robbie um represented um so thanks for hopping on the call and chatting about it with me thank Absolutely. you John. John, i'll talk to you this afternoon Bye guys. Thank you guys.